In this example for section 13.6, we want to find the gradient for a function of three variables. Find the gradient for the function given by f of x, y, z equals x squared plus y squared minus 4z. And find the direction of maximum increase at f at the point 2, negative 1, 1. Well, that gradient is going to be the direction of the maximum increase. Find the gradient of the function of three variables, we find the partial derivative with respect to x times i plus the partial derivative with respect to y times j plus the partial derivative with respect to z times k. When you take the partial derivative with respect to x, you treat x as a variable and treat y and z as constants. That derivative is 2x. The derivative with respect to y is 2y and the derivative with respect to z is a negative 4. So you're going to plug in those for your partial derivatives, and then we want to evaluate it at the point 2, negative 1, 1. Plug in 2 for x, negative 1 for y, and 1 for z. And when you do that, you get the vector 4i minus 2j minus 4k. So this is a function of three variables, and the direction of the maximum increase is the gradient of the function at that point. So this is, what we have here is a level surface of the function of three variables and a point in space. That vector, which is the gradient, is pointing in the direction of the greatest increase. Okay, in this example, we're given a function of three variables, w equals x, y squared, z squared. Find the gradient at the point and the maximum value of the directional derivative. And to find the gradient, you take the partial derivatives and you're going to evaluate the partial derivatives at the given point. And then the maximum value of the directional derivative is the ma magnitude of the gradient. Try this one on your own, pause the video, and then come back and check your answers. Okay, so our gradient is found by taking partial derivatives. Say we want to take the partial derivative of w with respect to x, y, and z. The gradient of f of x, y, z is equal to the partial derivative with respect to x. Treat x as the variable, y and z as constants to get y squared, z squared, i. Plus the partial derivative with respect to y is 2xy, z squared, j plus the partial derivative with respect to z is going to be 2xy squared z k. We want to find the gradient at our given point. Evaluate this at the point 2, 1, 1, plugging in 2 for x, 1 for y, and 1 for z to get 1 squared times 1 squared i plus 2 times 2 times 1 times 1 squared j plus 2 times 2 times 1 squared times 1 k. And when we simplify that, we get the vector i plus 4j plus 4k. So that is a vector in space. It's pointing in the direction of the greatest increase. That is our gradient of the function evaluated at the point 2, 1, 1. Now to find the maximum value of the directional derivative, we want to find the magnitude of that gradient vector. So find the magnitude of that vector. It's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 4 squared. which is equal to 16, 16 is 32 and 1, 33. Square root of 33. So again, that the, ma the maximum value of that directional derivative of any looking in any direction on this function at the given point in space 2, 1, 1.
the last slide I have here for section 13.6 has a couple links. Go ahead and explore those links, which will um, reveal some more information or more applications of gradients and directional derivatives. Now this figure shows a topographic map care carried by a group of hikers. You want to sketch the paths of steepest descent if the hikers start at point A and if they start at point B. Well, in a topographic map, you have level curves. Those are connecting um, lines of equal elevation. And the closer those lines are together, the steeper the descent. The, the elevation is changing much more rapidly if those lines are closer together. It's more gradual change in elevation if the, if the contour lines are spaced further apart. So if you're here at point A and you want to find the quickest way down this mountain, well, you want to go in the direction of the gradient vectors, which are going to be actually normal to the level curves. So I would be going down in this direction, very, very steep direction here to descend the mountain. Now, if you're at point B, instead of going maybe uh, south, or if you're going south, you're probably heading towards the top of the mountain. But if you head northeast, that's going to be the steepest descent, at least going for the first part of it there. In this example, we're using a weather map. Meteorologists measure the atmospheric pressure in units called millibars. From these observations, they create weather maps on which curves of equal atmospheric pressure, isobars, are drawn. These are level curves to the function p of x, y, yielding the pressure at any point. In this example, we're asked to sketch the gradients to the isobars at the points a, b, and c. And although the magnitudes of the gradients are unknown, their, relative, their lengths relative to each other can be estimated. And then we want to answer the question at which point, which of the three points is the wind speed the greatest if the speed increases as the pressure gradient increases. So the gradient is going to be pointing in the direction of the greatest increase. So in this case, it's going to be the greatest increase in pressure. We have um, low pressure areas with the red and high pressure areas with the blue. Now it's going to be normal to the level curves, and the closer those curves are together, the, the quicker the increase in pressure, or the quicker change in pressure. So the gradient is going to be longer if those level curves are closer together. If the level curves, say here, are spaced further apart, the pressure is not changing as quickly at A as it is changing at B. So the length of the gradient vector is going to be smaller at A than at B. Uh, C, it appears that the pressure is not changing as much here as well. It's going to be pointing in the, in the um, direction of the greatest increase in pressure. So again, if we have, if you're at point A, um, it appears that this would be a, a relatively small vector normal to the level curve. Now, if you're at B, this is low pressure here, it's going to be a much longer vector pointing in the direction of the greatest increase. It's going to be normal to the curve. And if you're at C, the, the um, gradient vector, probably not as big, definitely not as big as the gradient vector at B. And if out of these three points, A, B, and C, we need to decide which three points is the wind speed the greatest if the speed increases as the pressure gradient increases. So the closer those are together, the, um, the faster the wind speed. So the, the, of the three points, point B would be the point where the wind speed is the greatest. 